Hello, welcome to Relox Engineering. I'm Alan. Today I'm changing the rear brake shoes on a Volkswagen up. Some years ago I changed the front brake pads and there's a video on YouTube showing how I did that. I'll leave a link in the comments box at the beginning of the video. The rear brake shoes have an adjuster which needs releasing before you can remove the rear brake drum. To release the adjuster you put the screwdriver through the wheel bolt hole and you can move the adjuster. I'll show this in more detail in the video. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. We're looking at the rear brake shoes on the Volkswagen up. Last time I changed the front pads and today we're changing the rear shoes. The handbrake on the up works on the rear wheels. So as I'm working on the rear wheels, I need to put the car into gear. I'll place the brick on the front wheel and one on the rear wheel that I'm not working on. Now the first job is to remove the wheel trim. Now before I jack it up, it's easier to slacken the wheel studs while the wheel is still on the ground. It's in gear, there are bricks under the wheels, so I can now take the handbrake off. Now it's ready to be jacked up. I'm using a hydraulic trolley jack to lift the rear wheel. Never trust anything that's just held with a hydraulic jack. Always use some axle stands or some other means of holding the vehicle. But in this case, the vehicle's only lifted two inches. So if the seal fails on the jack, the vehicle will just drop down level with the top of the jack. No harm done. So I don't need axle stands in this case. And I'm not going under the car. I'm just working at the side of it. I've removed the wheel nuts, so now I can take the wheel off. If I undo this screw here, then you should be able to get the drum off. I'm using a number 30 star driver to take the screw out that holds the rear drum. I'm using a copper hammer, just tapping the brake drum to remove the rust and break the seal. Release the brake adjuster by putting a screwdriver through the stud hole. And with the drum removed, you can see what you're trying to do is lift this lever up and that releases the automatic tensioner on the brake shoes. So back to removing the drum. You should be able to get a screwdriver through the wheel bolt hole to adjust the tension. Once the tension is released, you can now continue to remove the drum. Tap it around the edge of the drum on the front face. Don't hit it on the top because the inside is machined to tight tolerances for the braking surface. And if you hit it on the outer edge, you could damage the braking surface. Just hit it on the outside to break the rust so you can remove the drum. This is well rusted on. This should come off here. 
I think I need to put some penetrating oil on it and leave it. I left it for a, an hour or two and then I put some screwdrivers behind the back of the drum and the back plate like this and just lever it off so you can see the insides. The next thing I need to do is give this a good clean with some brake and clutch cleaner. I'll give this a good spray. You can see the dirt coming off that. This will evaporate and be dry within a few minutes. Now before you take this to bits, just take a picture of the positions of the springs on the top and the bottom so you have a reference for when you come to reassemble the new shoes. You can see on the new shoes they have a leading edge which is this edge which is close to the steel and a trailing edge which is this edge where the lining finishes well before the end. So just make sure they fit on the right way. You have that on each shoe. You can see on the old brake shoes, the leading edge was at the top by the brake cylinder on each side. The brake shoes also have the two shoes with the handbrake lever, which is this part silver, and the other side is plain. So you need to make sure that you put the lever on the correct side. Here you can see the spring with the cap on looks like this. There's a pin at the back, then the spring, then the cap. The cap goes on and turns half a turn and will stay in position. To take the spring and the shoe off, you need to push the spring in, to turn it half a turn, and then that should come out. Use some pliers, just twist it and take the cap off. Remove the spring and take the pin out from the back. This shoe now is free. You can see I've taken the pin out. It's easy to move. There's another pin on this side which I've taken out and that's free to move. The only thing holding them is the tension between the springs on the top and bottom. Lever the shoe back. Over the piston lugs. And the same with the right one, so they're clear of the lugs. Remove the lower spring first at the front and the tensioner. And also then you can get up the lever by lifting up the shoes over the top of the hub. You have to stretch the springs to get them off. You can then get at the brake lever and you can disconnect the handbrake. You can then strip it down. I'm glad I took the photos because I needed them to confirm which way the springs fit. I fitted the new shoes, refitted all the old springs, the adjusting springs and the springs that hold the shoe to the back plate. If the piston comes out while you're dismantling or assembling, then you'll need to bleed the brake. I've replaced the brake drum, ensured it all turns okay, and adjusted the handbrake. I've refitted the wheel, and now I can do it all again on the other side. Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was interesting, hope it's useful, and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering. Thank you.